In this video, I'm going to show you the most commonly asked questions at Burlington Stores interviews and help you plan good answers that will get you a job working at Burlington. So let's start with a super important question, which is what times can you work? And you've got to get this question right. So to be successful, make sure you've got a good answer. And I'm going to show you what you need to think about and what they're looking for and some great phrases that you can use in your interview. So the first thing you always want to think about is what do they actually want? You always want to be giving the answer that is going to help you get the job and is what they really want to hear. You've got to have that good availability. So that's the next thing. Make sure you can show as much availability as possible and as much flexibility as you can. They would rather employ someone that says yes than someone that says no. Always remember if they are asking, can you work this time? There is a reason they have that time in mind. So the more you can say yes, the better your chance of getting the job are. And also, they obviously want to employ people who take their job seriously. So if you're saying no to lots of different times, then they are questioning whether your job is high up your priorities. And the other thing that people do terribly in this question is they immediately list all the times that they can't work. It's a very negative way to answer this, and it is to be avoided. So focus on what you can do rather than giving them a list of reasons not to hire you. Let's now look at things that they actually like to hear and some good phrases that you can use and you can choose as many of these as work for you. So the first thing you could say if you've got really brilliant availability would be to say, I could work the full range of store opening hours. That really is the perfect answer to this question. You could also say that you're open to a wide range of working hours and can work around business needs. So that's slightly less than saying I can work absolutely any time and it's fine to schedule me anywhere. Then you're saying that you can work a wide range. So you're offering lots of flexibility, but not 100%. Then you could say you can work evenings and weekends. They may ask about those times. So you may want to jump ahead and say that those are times that you would be open to. You could say that you can increase hours during peak times. For example, Christmas is a very busy training time. And saying that you could take on more hours then would be a good thing to say. And you could say that you're open to overtime if needed. You may never be offered this, but it's a nice thing just to mention. You could also be ready for questions like uh, weekend work or do you have reliable transport so they may ask about can you work at the weekend if you say no to that you've got to remember they've asked that for a reason so ideally you want to try and say yes if you do say no that's your choice but it could harm you because they've asked that for a reason and they do want to see that you can get to the store reliably on time so be ready for any questions about how you're going to get there and plan that out as well the next question you really need to be prepared for is what can you tell me about Burlington? Obviously, you do not want to turn up to your interview having not researched the company and not being able to answer this question. So you've got to be prepared for this one. So in this section, I'm going to show you how you can answer this question and also give you the facts that you can take to your interview to really help to impress them. So let's look at how you answer it. The first thing you always do is start in the middle of that diagram. So go with the obvious facts. Tell them the really obvious things about their business to show that you know the basics. Then show that you've done some research. And then what you ultimately want to do is show that you've actually worked hard to prepare for your interview. People who have taken the effort and worked hard to prepare are probably going to be better employees. That's one of the reasons they're asking this question. They want to actually see that you've taken the time to actually do some research and that's going to help you get the job. So let's look at the facts that you can take to your interview. The first thing you say is that they are a department store retailer. That is how you describe the business. Then you say that they specialize in off price. So don't describe their products as cheap. Describe them as being off price. So what that means is that they are buying them in at a very good price and instead of selling them full price or what the manufacturer or brand might sell them at, they are selling the product at a much, much lower price and delivering what you could say is outstanding value. That is what they try to offer to their customers. You can then talk about the fact that they have fast moving inventory. And that means that things don't stay in the store very long. They're bought in, the customers snap them up really quickly and then new stock comes in. It's always changing and that contributes to a kind of treasure hunt sort of environment where every time a customer comes to the store, there is a slightly different range. So you can always find something new and exciting and that's what brings people back. They have very skilled buyers. That's really the secret in this business is having good buyers. Buyers are the people that actually buy in the merchandise. They choose what to buy and they negotiate the prices. And if they do their job well, what will happen is you've bought in really good merchandise at amazing prices that's going to fly off the shelves. That is the secret to the business. They were originally founded in 1972 
and they were founded and are headquartered currently in Burlington, New Jersey. And that's where you can see uh, the name coming from. They were founded by Henrietta and Monroe Milstein. That's a name to take to your interview. A good fact about the company is that the money was originally saved from her librarian job. That's how they got the capital to start the business. They were originally known as the Burlington Coat Factory, and still many people refer to them as the Burlington Coat Factory because originally they specialized in wholesale coats and jackets. So you put Burlington and then the fact that they sold coats together, and that's where the name comes from. They are now so large that they are listed on the New York Stock Exchange and they compete with TGX companies. They own TJ Maxx and Ross Stores being their main competitors. They're also very active in charity. They've raised a lot of money for various charities. So I would look up and see what charities they're currently supporting and how much has been raised. And that's a good fact to mention in your interview. My last tip on this section is take some time to read the Burlington Stores annual report. It's called the Form 10K. Don't read it every single word cover to cover. Just skim through it and you'll get lots of great facts and information to take to your interview and also say in your interview that you read it because that's a good thing to say to show that you've actually really done some preparation for your interview. And so feel free to screenshot this and take these facts to your interview. We can now go on and look at a different question, which is what is your biggest strength that you could bring to Burlington? The way you'll answer this is very simple. You're going to start with a strength that matters. Don't pick something that's not actually very important. Then have some evidence to back it up, some proof, or have an example to say when you actually used it, because that makes the answer so much stronger. And then you have to make it highly relevant. Choose an example and a strength that matches exactly what you're going to be doing at the store as much as possible. Then when you answer it, let's use a very simple format. I believe that one of my major strengths is say what your strength is, and I'll give you some ideas of what you could say. In the past, I've used this strength to give an example of when you've used that strength, or if it's a qualification, you could bring that qualification with you. And then the really important thing to do is say at Burlington, this strength will help me too, and explain how this strength is going to make you better at the job. Some ideas that you might take with you is if you've got customer service experience and you're good at customer service, that is a brilliant strength. And that experience is really useful and something that you'd be showing off at your interview as much as possible. If you've got lots of knowledge about fashion, that's a big interest and passion of yours. That's one to go with. If you're great at working in a team or you have a strong work ethic, there are some other good strengths that Burlington would be interested to hear about. So pick one of those or think up your own one that is an important and significant strength and follow that simple three-step answer process and you'll have a great answer to what your strength is. The next one you definitely want to be prepared for is what is your biggest weakness because you don't want to try and make up a weakness on the spot because if you get it wrong, it can be really bad. So let's look at how you actually answer this. The first thing is don't use a fake weakness. You don't want to say something like I'm a total perfectionist and set myself standards that are often too high to meet. That doesn't go down very well. It's a fake weakness and it suggests that you haven't really thought about your weaknesses and you don't know what they are. And if you give that answer, they may ask, yes, can we have another weakness? Because that's not a proper one. Then you want to do something to fix it. What are you going to do to make this weakness go away? And then the most important thing to do is ensure that they really don't care about it. Don't pick something that's actually important. If you say your weakness is something that's important for the job, it's going to hurt your chance of getting the job. So go with a weakness that's irrelevant. And I'll give you some ideas of weaknesses that are good to use that are usually not very important. So if you were to say, for example, managers have said, um, I have a bad attitude and customers complain that I smell, you're probably not going to get the job. So don't go with a weakness that actually matters. When you answer it dead simple, you just say a weakness, which I'm aware of is say what the weakness is. Don't go into detail. Don't explain why it's a big weakness. Just say the weakness and move on as quick as possible. And then what you do is you say to overcome this weakness, I plan to, and then go on about all the things that you want to do and how you're going to overcome the weakness. So instead of the question, um, basically bringing out something negative, you're going, oh, and I have all these plans that I'm always wanting to develop and learn rather than here is this debilitating weakness that's going to ruin everything. It's got to be the focus on doing something about the weakness rather than what it is. Let's look at some weaknesses that you could use. So delegation, that means where you're telling someone else to do something and, and spreading out work and efficiently managing resources. That is a management thing. If you're not applying for a management job, you're not going to really worry about delegation. And if you're not in management and you want to be in management, that is simply something that you'll build up and learn over time. 
If you're not great at spelling, that's absolutely fine. It's probably not going to be a big issue in most roles unless they're a more senior or management role. If you're not great at maths, probably not going to be a big problem. If English is your only language, as long as you're not applying in a region where, for example, Spanish is very commonly spoken or you're in a multilingual area where you have, say, a very high uh, population that speak another language, then only speaking one language is not going to be a huge disadvantage and is not going to be a particularly difficult one to explain away because you just talk about your ambition to learn a new language in future and there is your solution to what you're going to do about this weakness. And then if you're someone that likes to take on too much, you have trouble saying no, that can be a nice simple weakness to use because in some ways it's slightly positive, but actually it is it is really a weakness and it may cause you to be a little bit overloaded. So choose one of those or think up your own weakness that isn't important to the job, but is a real weakness and use my simple strategy of talking about what you're doing and less about what the weakness is and you'll fly through this question. The next question is, when could you start? Two simple answers, just pick one. So you could say, one, if successful, I would be available to start at your earliest convenience. That is if you start straight away. If you can't start straight away, go with option two. I would be available to start immediately after working my notice period, which is, so if you've got another job, you probably have a notice period, find out what it is and say that I would need to work two weeks or three weeks and then I would be free from that contract and could join you immediately afterwards. That is the right answer. If you want to go on holiday right now and want to delay it for a month, that's probably going to be a big problem and you want to think carefully about doing that because that's negative. The faster you can start, usually that's better. But if you do have other work commitments, that's understandable. That is normal procedure and that shouldn't be a problem. The next question you definitely want to be ready for and have a good answer prepared is tell me a bit about yourself. Unfortunately, for many people, this is a wasted opportunity and is thrown away. What you need to do is actually plan a good structured answer to take advantage of this. This is your chance to show them that you can do the job, you've got the experience, you've got the skills, you've got the qualities, and this is the right place for you. So let's look at a structure that you can follow. So the first thing you do is you talk about your past experience. Then you talk about your qualities and skills. I'm going to tell you some of the qualities and skills that would be really good things to say in a Burlington interview specifically. And then what you want to do is actually explain why did you apply here? Why is this the right job for you? And you want to give a few reasons why you want to work at Burlington. So for past experience, you want to list your work experience. You don't have to go in order, but you want to show off all of your experience. What you want to focus is on retail and customer experience or customer service. So if you have been working with customers or working in retail that's very similar or related to this job, you want to talk much more about that and then less about your other roles, but do also mention them. The next thing you want to do is you want to highlight any skills learned. So what did you learn from those jobs? How did those jobs help you be well prepared for this? Or if you've not got work experience, you want to be talking about your schooling and your education and sports and other things that you did, maybe volunteering, anything that you did that shows that you've got the skills to be good at this and you're the right person to employ. And then any qualifications that you have, you can always mention those because it's good to have qualifications and they want to hear about them. The next thing is your qualities and skills. So reliable is one of the most important qualities that they're interested in. So say that you are reliable if that's the case. If you are someone that's very friendly, that is a key part of customer service and working effectively in a team. Definitely say that you work well with others if that is the case, that you are customer focused and that you are interested in fashion. You see, these are things that they want in their employees. So you'd say that you've got them. Then we need to round off your answer by actually explaining why this is the right place to work and why this job meets your interests and your needs for a job. So say that you love working in retail. If you've got experience working in retail and you really love it, say that, be enthusiastic about it. If you love the Burlington brand and this is somewhere you've shopped for many years and you've got lots of positive things to say about it as a customer, now is a good time to mention that. If you enjoy helping customers, that's a good thing to mention. That's something they want to hear. And then one thing to think about, and this is very personal, is why is this the right career move? Why do you want to move to this? Are you ambitious? Do you see a long-term opportunity with the company? Is this something that perfectly matches your interests? That is something to talk about. And we'll look more about why you should want to work at Burlington or why you want to be there and 
when you're asked the question around um, why have you chosen to apply here, we'll flesh out that answer a little bit more. So as I said, we're going to look at why you want to work at Burlington. Again, this is a personal question. I can't tell you why you want to work there, but I can give you lots of suggestions about things that they want to hear and what they don't want to hear. So let's think about the things that they don't want to hear. And people do actually say these in the interview and you want to steer clear of them. So saying I live close to this store basically says you're applying here for your own convenience and you're not particularly interested in working at this particular brand and Burlington's not something you're interested in, you just want to work here because it's close. Don't say something like, I've got to earn some money and you're doing it because you get a salary. Don't give the idea in any way that you're doing this until something better comes up, that you're gonna get this job, but you're looking for somewhere else. People do say that in interviews or they give that impression, very negative. And really, if it's irrelevant to Burlington, it's not the right thing to be talking about. Focus on what they actually want to hear. So let's look at what they do want to hear. So. Um, some inspiration. You could talk about your customer experience, career opportunities. So opportunities for doing more training and internal promotions. Is this a long-term career? Do you really enjoy customer service? Uh, it's a very fast growing company. So there's going to be opportunities to grow with the company. And if you know someone that works there, then you can bring that in and say that I've spoken to people who work here and they've said really good things. You don't have to name who they are, but you could make that link. So let's actually structure the answer now. So you start by talking about what would you like about working here? Then think about why you want to actually work in retail. Then think about career progression. If you are ambitious, you could talk about how you want to be working for a growing company and that you can grow with the company and that you see that long term, there's going to be lots of opportunities for you to develop at this company. If you really love the Burlington brand, you've shopped there for a long time, talk about your brand love once you went through the previous ones. Definitely mention that you've got a fashion interest because you're applying to a fashion retailer and always throughout all of your answers, show enthusiasm. So that's how you structure it, what you shouldn't say and some inspiration. So feel free to take down any of this and plan out an answer around this and you will fly through this question. Before we finish, here are some good questions that you can ask at the end. So they may say at the end of the interview, do you have any questions for us? And you've got to have questions ready. So I'm gonna give you some suggestions of some questions that you can take to the interview and some questions that you should not ask. So one question you might ask is, as I'm very interested in this position, I am keen to know what the next steps in Burlington's recruitment process are. Show that you're really interested in getting the job, re-emphasize your interest in getting this particular position, and you probably want to find out what happens next. So that's a good one to ask. You could say, could you tell me more about the team you have at this Burlington store and how my role would fit in? So you'll learn more about the job. You can basically reply to that by showing an interest in that role and show an interest in your colleagues. You could ask what opportunities could there be for me to upskill and develop at Burlington over the years. Um, so you could be told about some training programs. You could be told about other people's careers that have progressed. You could show a real interest in getting better, developing and learning. That's a really positive thing in an interview. You could also say, what do you personally enjoy most about working at Burlington? And when they tell you things that they like about working there, you can share in that enthusiasm and show some agreement with that. You can ask what makes a great Burlington employee and when they tell you what they look for in good employees, you can use that to engage in a discussion about how your skills and knowledge and experience matches up with what a good employee actually looks like and that you can help them see that you are the right employee. And then you might consider inventing one question on the day based on how the interviews went or something that you do wonder about and you feel that you want to know more about but never ask about switching to another store because you're being interviewed by the manager of that store who's interested in staffing their store and not basically staffing their store for a little bit and then having someone that's desperate to leave as quick as possible. Don't ask about time off, delaying start dates, and don't try and negotiate a higher salary. You're probably not gonna be able to negotiate anyway, and during the interview is definitely the wrong time to do it. So here's some questions to take to your interview. I hope this was helpful. I wish you the best of luck in your Burlington interview. And finally, thank you very much for watching.